mask develops. And uh, the mask is like, and you have to see, that you have to think that the mask it's not the actor that is moving the mask, but it's the mask that is moving the actor. If I enter in a mask, I am like uh, posseduto, mm -hmm. uh, possessed. Yes, possessed, yes. possessed by the mask. Yeah? Like if the mask has uh, its own spirit. Yeah? Um, this is why in many cultures uh, they believe that they are uh, a holy objects. They, they, but still, in our Western civilization, we have a sort of respect for this kind of uh, objects. It's not just something that you throw away, that uh, no, I have to treat it well. Yeah? So this is Pantalone. Pantalone is uh, an old man, very rich. He's a merchant. Uh, you think that we are, um, very, uh, this, this stereotype, they um, were born in the 15th century between the, the end of the 14th century and the beginning of the 15th century, and then we'll go ahead, where uh, we cannot yet um, to speak about a bourgeois class, but just a, a class of merchant, mer mercanti. Merchants, merchants. Merchant there was no middle class. Then, was sorry, the sorry, it, it will become a, a bourgeois class, but we have to arrive till the 1700 and 1800 to speak about a bourgeois class. And um, so, <coughs> for someone that became very rich, but he comes from a lower class, but he is much, much more important now because he's rich, he has power. Eh? But he's not an aristocratic, that instead very important just because he was born aristocratic. Sometimes they are rich, sometimes they are not, but they are aristocratic that are on the top of the society. Eh? So, the aristocratic are using pantalone because he's a merchant, he's selling a lot of things, he takes money, he give money, gives money if someone needs money, you know? and, um, and, but they don't respect him so much because he was a servant once, okay? The he servant, money. Eh? He, he did a because it was coming from a but lower class. He, he the usura. <coughs> they told you, a, no, it's not, yes, yeah, let's say so that it's just money. Uh, the beginning. It takes interest. Eh? <laughs> well, we, we can also read it in uh, Shakespeare, many of these characters that are very similar to this kind of. Then instead, the servants are using him if they need him, but they display him a little bit because he comes from their own class, but he betray, betrayed the, the, the origin, his origin. Okay? Okay. Pantalone has two big loves, money and sex. So as a, a, an old guy, he is always looking for young, young girls, yeah? so whatever. <laughs> and uh, we represent Pantalone. <laughs> Now, uh, I have a little problem. The masks usually are made on the face of the actor. Uh, to, to, to build up a mask is a very complicated process. Uh, you have to take the shape of the, of, the, of the face of the actor and then to make uh, a shape in wood and then to, to make it, you, know, you make it in clay, then in wood, and then you make it with a leather, and that's, so it's very complicated. These are not made for my face, so I wear them, but it doesn't work very well. Because, you know, I can see very well from the eyes, they are too big for me. The, anyway, I just show you what, how pantalone is. Eh? Dove hai messo il mio libro dei conti che voglio contare? Oh, nice girl, that is. <laughs> a bag uh, with money anchored to the belt. The, ba the, the bag is just hanging, so when he, he walk, you know, the, the, the bag is with So you have to think what you want. <laughs> <laughs> very vulgar, I mean, connected with really the, 
the lower aspect of life, because who invented the Commedia dell'arte? They were not uh, a cultural, cultural people, they were just few poor people. Eh? And they, the, the most important thing is to, 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 to eat, to make love, you know, to have some money just to survive. That's the, the, the value of their life. Okay? And um, so this is Pantalone. Then we have, the, so Pantalone is an important guy, so if you have Pantalone on stage, we will take the center, usually. Eh? And if he's speaking with a servant, the servant is uh, on the side. The same is for the doctor. Now, this is the doctor, it's a strange face. Eh? Uh, I have to say that uh, um, originally the masks were in some way connected with an animal. They were just the remembering of Sancho. So as a pantalone could suggest the idea of uh, un uccello rapace, a bird... Uh, like an eagle or... Yeah. Um, like an eagle. Come si dice rapace? I don't know. One, uh, you know, those birds that are um, hunting... Yeah, it's like an eagle. Uh, it's like, yeah. Yeah. A vulture, yeah, yeah. something, yeah. So he's, uh, uh, more, uh, yeah, it's he really an eagle. Of this, this the way is. And instead, Pantalone, <coughs> instead the, the doctor, uh, is more close to a sort of uh, bull, in Toro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and um, why? Because Pantalone represents the, the um, cultural class of their time. Uh, you know, uh, the universities, they are just, were splitting, splitting, splitting sorgendo dappertutto. Where uh, they were, uh, basically, they were starting to, oh, in Italy, they were starting place. to have a but university yeah. all over the place. All, all, all over, Europe. not really. But, but the yeah. first university that we had in Italy was in Bologna. 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 You know Bologna? Okay. Yeah. Did you hear about Bologna? That is a big, a beautiful old town. And um, so the first university was there, where, of course, all the people that were working <coughs> and studying at the university, they still were talking Latin, you know? not Italian yet. Italian was, but Italian was spoken by poor people from the lower class, by the, uh, the cultural classes, they were still talking Latin, so as in the church, for example. And um, so uh, there was a big gap between they are cultural, cultural people and the poor people, but they didn't, didn't understand each other anymore. <laughs> so they, the poor people, how they represent a doctor, the, the doctor as a stupid man who is talking something about, the, they don't, don't understand what he's talking about, and, um, and is very <coughs> present, very strong, very fat, because uh, they are rich and they can eat a lot of uh, things. So the doctor is a big guy. So il mio libro, ut rubercula mea, at rosam escavandum est dove, bla 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 bla, and he speaks Latin, I don't, I don't remember, I think I, I studied Latin eight years, I don't remember, it's okay. And uh, so, and he is like a bull, you know, like a bull, fat, big, and he's always going, oh, 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 it is a doctor. You have to think that the actor has to, to wear a big bell, belly. And he's always just putting the, the arms are just resting on, on uh, his belly, you know. So it's a he usually he has a book that is always uh, saying words from the book. So this is uh, the doctor. And as you can see already, they are a sort of parody of uh, people from the point of view of the poor people. Yeah? Now, um, they, they have another card, that is this one. This is a little bit, this is a strange mask, I mean, not always like that, this character, sometimes the nose. Uh, um, this is the captain. The captain 
was the, the description of another character that you, at that time, you could meet all over Italy. Uh, that was the, um, what is it called? Un, un capitano di ventura. So those mi military uh, people, Come they, 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 are, they came, most of them, they came from Spain. And they were just paid to be a war against yeah. someone else. It was Mercena really no, 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 no. mercenary. Yes, yes, but they yes, are mercenary. Mercenary. You know, the one that. Yeah. And they, most of them, they were <coughs> Spanish because the Spain at that time was a very big, important uh, nation. Huh? And um, and from the poor people, we saw these guys that were you know, full of plumes, boots, swords. So they were incredible. Uh, and they are mocking them, uh, 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 them describing them yeah. as, uh, yes, big guy, so important, uh, very you know, proud of themselves, like a little bit of, um, what is it called, Pavone? Peacock. Peacock. Yeah, but me, meaning the, you know, they, they, they like to show off. They have to show themselves. They have to Nazis. show their, you know, their strength. Well, it's their... really, you know, I, uh, I show off. I think I'm the best. Full of themselves. Yeah. <laughs> yes, proud of themselves. Right? And also telling about, you know, the war in, uh, in, in Africa where I killed a thousand uh, enemies and then I went to be, do the war here and then I was killing by myself another uh, 400 people that uh, So, this is exaggeration about uh, every, everything. And um, so they are describing him as a guy, stupid guy. This is very difficult, this mask for me, because it really doesn't... smarter, more intelligent, the more, you know, brave, the more uh, everything. And, uh, and we have the servants. Here I have only three of them. The child. And one, two. These are three servants, three different servants. This is Zanni. Zanni is the oldest character that we find in Commedia dell'Arte. Then we we'll develop later in the century, in the after a few centuries, in other uh, characters still arriving to Arlecchino. Arlecchino, you, you for sure, you, uh, you know something about, yeah, heard this, about that. A very yeah. famous mask. So Zanni was uh, one of the first servants that we find in Commedia dell'Arte, and he is still, he's a, a little bit like a chicken, you see. Uh, he's so, uh, He's not so smart yet. He's, he's still a little bit stupid. He's just going around um, following what the master is asking to do. And, uh, and he's very um, diso uh, con movimenti dissociati. The movements are very yeah, it, it uncoordinated. Have, uh, it's harmonious uh, movement. They are not it's not coordinated. You know, like a, a strange animal. The strange animal that is going around looking what everybody is asking to do, and, uh, and so he's moving in a very. Uh, I'm sorry that I didn't think uh, we didn't think the, the pictures of the Sunny. Uh, but slowly, slowly, in the early Comedia dell'arte we find some Sunny, but then slowly, slowly, it disappears and becomes instead a, a servant. 
that is Arlecchino. Arlecchino, so the Zenni would be a sort of a stupid chicken. <laughs> Arlecchino, instead, is a very smart guy. And uh, Arlecchino, mm, there are two, kind, two kinds of Arlecchino. One is connected with a fox. The fox, you know, that is an animal that everybody thinks that is very smart. And uh, the other one is connected with a cat. This is a fox. The cat has round eyes, just so. And, um, and then there is this strange bottom, <coughs> red bottom here. Uh, we believe, because you know, what, what I am telling, telling to you is, uh, is something that uh, uh, I learned because many people studied Commedia dell'arte, trying to understand what, what happened years ago when uh, there weren't any DVD, any movies. So, so trying to, uh, to recreate something just from books, from documents, from um, chronicles of, of that time. So. But we think that this red button is a connection with uh, the uh, um, demoniac aspect of uh, Arlecchino. Mm. Uh, is the, the, the last uh, souvenir, the last of uh, a horn. A horn, the di 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 diavolo, the, 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 the devil, the, the, devil the horn of the devil. Also because there is a strange uh, connection with the idea of Arlecchino like, uh, like a cat, but also like um, the spirit of the, of the of horn. The, uh, in, you find something in Shakespeare like that, for example, Puck in uh, uh, Dimmer, Summer Night. And also you find it in, uh, in uh, German culture, the poltergeist. The poltergeist is a small spirit that lives inside homes and makes, you know, dispetti. Uh, it's a... Uh, looks, uh, uh, no. Come you say dispetti? Dispetti? Huh? Jokes, jokes, mean jokes. Yeah, yeah no, he's, he's, he's doing mean things, you know, just But he is a, a positive spirit of the home. But he's also a little bit, you know, tricky, tricky, tricky. Yeah. Tri 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 <laughs> Do you understand? Sometimes I get lost, I'm sorry. <laughs> and, uh, so uh, so this, uh, they think that this is uh, the, the, last, uh, the last sign of this uh, devil uh, origin of, the, of this mask. And the cat, of course, you know, I hope you know, you have cats at home. They know everything of your home. But it seems that they don't know anything. They are just by themselves. But they look at everything. They know. They, uh, they are ready to, to steal food if, uh, if it happens. So I love cats. I love animals. But uh, the cats are really a special animal. It's uh, such an incredible creature. Eh? And I think uh, just like that, that. He knows everything, what's going on. Of course, he tries, he tries to... His first uh, problem is to eat, because at that time their masters didn't give just so much eat, food to their servants. It was just to, like to have a dog, you know, just take the bones and that's all. <laughs> so the poor Arlecchino is always hungry, he's always looking for something to eat. Yeah. And uh, then usually he's in love with, the, with a, a, a servant, a female servant. And we have a lot of scenes in many plots where there are, you know, the, you know the, the, what happens between Arlecchino and the <coughs> family. So, uh, and um, also he is the guy who, in a, in a plot, is that one who uh, resolves, uh, bring to the end all the conflicts, all the problems that are inside the, the plot. With, thanks to Arlecchino, everything goes to a happy end. That is, that is Arlecchino. This is another kind of uh, servant, uh, that is Brighella. You know, because also uh, some characters are the same, but they have been uh, changed a little bit. It depends which region of Italy they come from. Arlecchino, for example, is coming from a, a city in North Italy called Bergamo. And uh, so he speaks with an accent, that is an accento bergamasco. Pantalone. Pantalone is totally Venetian, from Venice, so he speaks Venetian, Veneziano. Brighella, Brighella can speak a lot, uh, do, the, doctor, the doctor that is from Bologna speaks Bolognese, con un accento with an accent that is from Bologna. Brighella is a servant, very similar to Arlecchino, but he's older, so he's already more quiet. 
uh, fighter and, uh, and he also made a small career. Usually Brighella has a, has a little um, wine shop as a mosteria. Yeah. Yeah? No, mosteria, kind of you know now what is it because they're very fancy now. At that time, where it's so fancy. You know, where you could buy some wine, some food, something very simple. And um, so it's in, usually it's just on the side in, of Arlecchino and all the other characters. It, it's, uh, it never is the protagonist, the main character in a, in a comedy. Yeah. And uh, so, so we did it. That's, that's more or less all the characters. They are, as, as we said, stereotypes. And uh, they were mocking the, um, the, the society of that time. You know? So the only character that is not um, represented in the Commedia dell'arte is something connected with church. It's very, it was very dangerous to, to mock the church. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we don't have characters with priests or something, like popes, you know, nothing, uh, nothing like that. Uh, the church was uh, on the side. It, 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 in fact, if you, if I think you know that the actors still a certain, a certain century, they were, were not buried, 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 buried in a, in a holy land. They had buried outside of the cemeteries, the church cemeteries. No, was not. Um, permitted to, yeah. so it was not accepted. The actor was uh, out of uh, the church laws mm -hmm. for many, many years. And, uh, outside the city? Hmm? Really outside of the city? Erano no, sepolti in luoghi città. sconsacrati. No, non fuori no. della città? No, sì, comunque sconsacrati, yeah. non nei luoghi consacrati. Yeah, no, 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 no sacred, no blessed mm. by mm. the church, by whatever church was. No, another, another thing to do, other than the geometry of the, um, uh, the use of the space in a stage, there is also the fact that the, the early Comedia dell'arte usually was, play, was played in a big square where markets were. So the people was not, were not, was not sitting just like you here in a comfortable seats just looking at the show. They were just moving, uh, buying, sell, selling, so there was a big mess there. And many people were talking different different dialects. So the poor actors, they had to to be able to, to let everyone to understand what they were saying, or, or what they were narrating. So every so it developed a, a sort of another under language that is the mining. Because to, uh, to let you understand there, if you don't hear me and I say, I, I am in love, I am in love with you, and uh, you don't understand when I say I am in love with you, I have to represent in some way. <laughs> and so it be, be, become the, to the, uh, they become to develop a, a miming language that is totally, uh, the under, uh, totally <coughs> underlying the lines, you know? So everything where, any kind of, of phrase that you can mime to, you speak and you do it, and you mime. So you develop a technique <laughs> that uh, has to be learned, of course, it's not so easy. And, uh, and this, is, this is why the Commedia dell'arte, slowly, slowly, when it stopped to, to be in squares, because the noble uh, societies tried to start to, to, to take the Comedia dell'arte inside their own castle. So the Comedia dell'arte lost a lot of aggressivity, a lot of vulgarity. It, be, it became more and more, a little bit more polite, you know, because the aristocrats couldn't uh, accept other level of. Eh? Um, so also the, the, the theatre started to change. They didn't, didn't need anymore to be so expressive with the body. And so slowly, slowly we arrived, slowly, slowly, in the 1700s, 1800s, and we arrived to the modern theater. But still, the character and the relationship between the characters, they are still the same. And uh, the relationship, if I play Chekhov, of course, I, I, there isn't pantalone, but the movement in, on stage, the relationship with the servant, and the master between a lover and the, the older lover are absolutely are the, the, the same. We find some, some retage of the Commedia dell'arte also in a certain kind of theater that is close to a comic theater, to the um, cabaret, to vaudeville. 
Yeah. And yeah. also clowns, yeah. the clown in the, in the circle. You know, you have the white clown and the, and the other clown. That is two characters of Commedia dell'arte. The white clown <coughs> is a master that has to be, you know, always in, its, uh, in himself. And the other one is the other one that is just uh, uh, mocking and uh, makes uh, mistakes and you, you laugh because he, he <laughs> fell down. So, so stupid, little stupid uh, things that make people uh, there are a lot of laws inside this, the preparation of a comedian. Um, it's not something that you can learn in one masterclass or something like that. You need months to, to learn how to move. Uh, I, I, show you, I, I was showing you the, the movement of pantalone, because they are always the same. You, you know that uh, the, the plots are changing. But the, um, the character are always the same. So we find Pantalone that is always moving like an old man. Uh, you find a doctor that is always like that. You find Arlecchino that is always uh, a small, uh, quick. How do you say it? In Italian? It's a special di gatto veloce che si si che si che si muove velocemente. Quindi Arlecchino is moving. Yes. 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 From one side to the other one, he's always picky, 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 picky. He knows, he goes, he sees, he sees everything. So, and, um, and instead, we have the female. The females, they don't wear masks. And also, the, the lovers, they don't, don't wear masks. I believe that there was a sort of a instinctive, instinctive respect for love. And uh, they, uh, they don't mock them. They don't. don't um, parody, the main parody of lovers. Yes, there is a like parody of the character, but not for the, not, not of love. Love is something that is on the top of every, of everything. Usually, we have, uh, we have uh, the lover, female, that is the daughter of Pantalone or maybe the doctor, or who knows. Then you have uh, the male lover, that is the son. Pantalone or the doctor, it depends which uh, plots we are talking about. They are in love, but there is some reason that doesn't permit to them to, to be together. So all the play will uh, go around this problem, this conflict, and then to Arlecchino, usually they finally can get together. Okay? So uh, the other female <coughs> is uh, the, the servant, that is the Pantano Arlecchino. Yeah? The, the, the label, the the same, the same stuff, but in another level. So it's more funny, it's more, a little bit more vulgar, it's, uh, it's, it's not a romantic love, but it's a love much more. <laughs> she is usually, is, you know, big tits. So big. <laughs> and uh, and uh, the only car female character that sometimes we find, but it's pretty rare for, is the um, Ruffiana. The, the, well, the pimp female. No, it's the, um, the, an old woman who organizes books for, for men. How do you yeah, call it's, it? it's, kind of a, it's kind of, you know, someone is uh, finding a woman for a man. It's an old woman. And you, sometimes we find this kind of character. Uh, I think that is no? coming, the and then she wears a mask. Oh. It's a sort of uh, old witch, something like that, you know? It's old and with a big nose, with some, it's not very handsome. I think that it's coming, it's coming from not really ta Italian um, Tradition. Old origin, mm -hmm. but Spanish, because there was an old, old play by Celestino de Rojas, a Spanish uh, playwright, a uh, very famous play called La Celestina. Did you heard about? I don't know if you heard about. It. And it's about the story with uh, one of these women. Uh, and we believe that probably the connection with Spain and Italy, you know, go to Italy, this character that sometimes is used, but not, uh, not more than that. And why does the female servant doesn't wear a mask? Perché, perché le, le donne non le donne che rappresentano dei rappresentano uh, the love, rappresentano l'amore, non, ah. non, non è preso in giro l'amore. Okay. Eh? Uh, so also for the beauty, what do you think? The 
e anche per <coughs> la bellezza del anche per the beauty yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. so it's for, also for the beauty and because the women in general from poor to noble they were representing love so most likely this was the reason they wear a mask now <coughs> Uh, before to, um, to show you, I, I mean, I am a woman, so I, I know only the, the women the roles. <laughs> I never did a lechino. I can teach a little bit, but I am more um, sure of myself when I do a woman role, of course. And I just have a small, small thing to show you, just to give an idea, just to demonstrate how the, um, the movements are enriching the, the wars, so because the war, if you read something, you know, they even didn't have plays in the Comedia dell'Arte, they have just what we call scenarios. They are just, um, basically, they were kind of actions. They, they had like a plot, a very <coughs> basic plot, like say, okay, uh, two people arrive and they fall in love, but they can't because mm -hmm. something. So it was a very simple story that you can tell in four lines. And yes, a trace of what's happening on stage. Right? Pantalone is entering on stage and he is, uh, is uh, angry because uh, someone stole uh, his money. Arlecchino uh, comes on stage and he says, No, Master, you didn't, uh, it's not, uh, nobody stole your story, you just gave your money to someone else. And from that, the actors are inventing. They are totally in inventing what's going on. So there wasn't a written play, a written text behind the Comedia dell'Arte. This is what means that it doesn't mean that every night they were playing something different. The actors, they were, they, they were few, uh, few groups, few companies, and they were always the same people. And each of them were um, specialized in doing pantalone, or in doing arlecchino, or in doing that, or doing that. Each of them was always repeating the same character. So slowly, slowly, they fixed some lines, of course. So the improvisation became something more than just improvisation. They were so, so good together. They, know, they knew each other so, so well that they could even improve, but only always on a, a, a scheme, a schema no, that was well known for, from both sides. That is very interesting because we have to arrive till the 1700 with Goldoni to start to have, do you know Carlo Goldoni? Have you ever about him? He's a very famous player. If you don't know him, again, tonight. Yeah. He wrote The Servants of Two Masters. And, you know, it's, uh, Carlo Goldoni is one of the the very few old Italian playwrights that are well known in the States, oh, no, and you yes. can find it in translations, and uh, you know, you can find, uh, you can see even, you can find productions around. It's one of the very few. So I have to be arrived to Carlo Goldoni to have again um, script, I mean, a written play. Before he was not like that. And Goldoni, in fact, in fact with, Gold, with, the, with the success that Goldoni had all over Europe, not only in, in Italy, uh, the Commedia dell'Arte starts to die, and slowly, slowly, it has been forgot. Eh? And became, in the 1800s, it became just some for carnival, you know, mass for carnival, and we lo lost totally. We had to arrive till the 1900s, after the war, when a very important Italian director, Streyer, uh, from the Piccolo Teatro di Milano, that is a very important theatre in Italy, he started to study and to try to re re revive, uh, yeah, he find a way to, to make Comedia dell'Arte again uh, yeah. alive. And he did an incredible job because today we have a lot of uh, documents about, we know well, how they were moving, how, what they were doing, how, which are the, the companies that in the beginning they created group of uh, professional people, because in the beginning they even didn't, didn't wear professional actors. Uh, we have uh, the first document that we have in our archive, 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 archive. archive uh, um, is dated tw uh, 25th of February, 1545, 1545. Uh, the name is La Fraternal Compagnia. The Brother, brothership, brothership, brother company. This is why, a mm, few years ago, uh, a group of people in Italy that um, created a sort of uh, 
organism, a sort of uh, association, a yeah. to save this tradition, um, they decided to declare the 25th of February of each year the International Day of Commedia dell'Arte, just to celebrate this first, first document that we have about the first uh, professional theatre company that we know in the world. And, um, and in these last years, I mean, I, the first time that I came to New York was the 81, working with the Munichans. From the, and I started to do some workshops here. It seems, and there was already, uh, in America there was a, a group already here working on Comedia dell'Arte in uh, Salt Lake City, I think. And uh, from that point, the Comedia dell'Arte started to, to spread, spread, so spread, to spread yeah. around, you know. Today, there are so many groups of Comedia dell'Arte all over the world that is really surprising, it's unbelievable. Uh, the, this year, the 25th of January, the International Day of Commedia dell'Arte, only in, in the States uh, there were something like uh, uh, 25 groups that performed something about Commedia dell'Arte all over the States. There was even, out of the state, there was a group in, uh, um, in uh, Antartide. How do you say Antartide? 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 You know? Yes. Uh, so all, all over the world, and uh, yeah, that is uh, this because really it's uh, it's the base of the modern theater. So that's, I think Antarctic, is the, the, the south of. The and uh, today is an incredible training for an actor, of course. Uh, you know, there is the, the Russian school, and then the American school, Strasbourg, uh, Kazan, uh, all that. Eh? And, um, okay, I will show you just a little thing. Do you have in your hand this? Uh, yes, what do you have? Yes, yes. Okay. okay. I, I want to show you this one. So read it before I do it. So at least you understand what it says. Because I could do it also in English.